Okay. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you again, all of you, for sticking around to listen to me and to others who are going to speak afterwards. And just a really brief to echo the thanks we've already had to Alan for organising this wonderful venue and event, and it's been really interesting. And uh, I recognise, through listening to the speeches this morning, the many years of combined experience and uh, uh, specialism that is in this room today, and I and I, I found it incredibly helpful. So I'm I'm Russell James. I'm from Specialist Door Solutions, and we are a specialist door manufacturer to the healthcare sector. Um, we have a Hampshire-based factory. Now, just really briefly, can I give a really quick disclaimer? And I'm sorry, when we pre prepped these slides some months ago, I had not attended one of these events, so I wasn't exactly sure where we needed to go with it. So if they're slightly don't flow, it's because I've cribbed pieces from our longer CPD. And of course, I would be delighted to speak to you afterwards, plus any of my colleagues, or for you to drop me a line and to arrange a, a full-on CPD at your premises where we'd even buy you lunch. So please, please do take up, and I'll beg your sympathies in my presentation. So we titled our CPD Sustainability and Longevity of Fire Doors in Healthcare. Now, I'm going to very much tailor my comments to the fire sector because that's where we're talking today, um, and I appreciate there are many other facts I won't cover, but please do be free. So, so let me work for this. Um, Incidentally, on the way through while I'm working this out, of course, I'm sure there's a person in this room here who will recognise that last picture, which is part of the NICU at Chelsea and Westminster Hospital, which we supplied at the beginning of COVID. So just briefly about us, we're a Hampshire-based company. We have a, we have a factory in Hampshire. We have a base in Surrey as well. And we've been in the industry for 30 years. We manufacture our door sets, like I said, especially to healthcare. Um, and we manufacture them from scratch in our factories. So that's about us, which gives us a certain amount of um, uh, USPs in the, in the market where we can offer you short lead times and certified door sets, which are proven to withstand hospital, hospital uh, usage. Now, challenges faced is my second point here. Obviously, I started in this game some 12 years ago, and uh, I'd never really taken much notice of door sets in hospitals, if I'm honest, to that point. When I was there, I started, when I started here, of course, the first thing I looked at was a door as soon as I went to hospital. So slightly bizarrely, you're sitting in A&E on a Saturday night with your kids and you're sitting there staring at the doors, which your company's provided some two years before. Now, I had never appreciated the level of traffic in a hospital environment. So obviously, when you're sitting in a place, it's a bit like being in an airport, you're watching, very interesting place to watch. You've got, you've got drug trolleys, you've got You've got patients on beds, you've got patients in wheelchairs, you've got patients in general bringing their, their bits and pieces in. You've then got doctors, you've got nurses. And then, of course, you've primarily got the culprits who have a damage in hospital door search, which is, our, which is the uh, porters. So the porters all come along with their dumpy bins. And I can honestly put my hand on my heart and I can say that I've, <laughs> I've seen these persons go straight through doors without any consideration whatsoever. So where are we going for that today? Fire compliance, of course. The net result of such usage is damage to the edges and the phases of doors and frames. Which is, absolutely, which is absolutely rife throughout hospitals. I don't know if there's anyone here, and I recognize a few fire, fire, uh, fire uh, compliance officers, trust agencies here, who would, I'm sure, back me up that they have absolutely not a jot of care about the product they're going through. I've seen, I was at St. Mary's Hospital once in Paddington, and of course, having not been long in the industry, I'd seen the lovely photographs of the Duchess of Cambridge coming out of her, her, her babies at St. Lindo Wing next door. I thought, what a wonderful, salubrious place this looks. And then all of a sudden, we get behind the scenes. I was outside the estate's office in a fantastic hospital, is too, and a fantastic team of persons there, I might add. And as I was standing, I heard a noise. And as it approached, I realized what it was. It was the porter with his linen trolley. And when he got to the door, did he give a jot? No, he didn't. He went straight through that door with his trolley. And that, that obviously happened many times before. We had, we had damaged the, the missing vision panel bead, we had a broken door handle, we had scratches right across the face of the door. Now, the net result of that, of course, is we had gaps. Now, Alan, referring back to your book from earlier, your Golden Thread book, which is a, a, an, absolute, you know, an absolute reference point for us today, we talk about the gaps around the doors and the key it is to keep those, to be able to retain those and, and uh, comply with the, the relevant gaps that we need to maintain there. And of course, that door that had, had gaps of not only more than three mil, but up to kind of 15 mil gaps. So that door was a completely non-compliant door. It also had chunks taken out of the frame. It also had a missing door handle. So far, far from compliant, that door. And that is exactly where we come in. As a specialist door manufacturer, we encapsulate our door sets. So we work closely with trust in this principle. And we're obviously one of my big points, I'm not referring to it today particularly, is the life cycle cost savings of a door over time. But more importantly, how we can help you as busy trust officers maintain your door's compliance and keep fire safety there. So 
Moving on to global test versus primary test evidence. Now, we, as a company, we have committed hugely to our fire testing. It's one of our biggest offerings as a manufacturer is what we can offer you in terms of fire testing. So we are continually testing our complete door set. So when I say a complete door set, our frame and our door leaf and our ironmongery in burn to death test, much like that picture we had earlier of the BM trial of furnace, we've got the big fires burning. So when we come to you as a manufacturer, we can offer you as a designer or a, or a hospital or a contractor, we can offer you the peace of mind of having what we call primary test evidence. So a certificate saying that whole door set has been tested as one item. Uh, there's none of this kind of when you're standing in the dock blame game of saying, no, it's the supplier of the ironmonger, it's the supplier of the kick plate, it's the supplier of the door frame. No, we're supplying you that whole, that whole item, that whole set tested as one set. Now, I know my colleagues were at a NAFO meeting yesterday at the headquarters of the London Fire Brigade where they discussed at length the idea of uh, uh, global certification versus primary test evidence where you've got door set tested. Now, I'm not going to go into the detail of that today, as I'm well aware we've had an absolute, uh, we've had a lot about different. Uh, uh, the legislation and what's required today. However, it is one that we're very, very keen to discuss with you on a, on, a lower, on, a, you know, on a personal level or group level at your trust, and we'd be delighted to do so. So moving on, our solution, obviously, our uh, encapsulated door sets, which is what we specialise in. And we see it time and time again where, by, where, where we uh, will provide that door and we can prevent damage, but we see it time and time again where we have Big projects, we've been involved in some recently. Um, one that sticks in my mind was a huge project that had to be handed over on a new cancer hospital in Wales at the beginning of the pandemic. The decision was taken at the end of the project there. We had, uh, we had um, the, the budget was over, overstretched on the door package. It often is, sadly, because much of the money's gone up above the roof in the M&E package. And the QSs were out with their scalpels and they were cutting the cost. The door, the door package was one of the, one of the biggest packages at the end of that project in line and, and sure enough, they cut the cost. Um, in that first year, we supplied 150,000 pounds worth of, re of replacement items to bring those doors back into scrap, back, back into compliant levels. Um, we had to supply kick plates, we had to supply edge protectors and other items of protection. Thereby kind of underlining my point that we are, uh, by providing the right the right door set in the first place, we can prevent this expense and this non-compliance issues that will happen as soon as, as that, the hospital comes into use. So um, having, sorry, I'm being terribly slow. I'm sorry, my, my mouth is four slides ahead of my, my behind. Um, so jumping back quickly, I can ad lib, that's fine. That's our factory in Hampshire, we've, we've covered that already. So going back to this damage, there's the fellow I was talking about at Imperial College. Now, it was an absolute classic because we see it everywhere we go. I saw one worse than that, to be fair. Watford General, I was there once and we had a fellow with, the, not the linen trolley, he had a big, the big yellow dumpy bins and he had two of them tied together. And as he went down that corridor, where incidentally Prince Philip had been just a few weeks before and opened a new ward, which looked fantastic, he went down with his two dumpy trolleys and took out the bollard on the corner of the corridor. That's how, that's the severeness of the severity of the impacts that doors in hospitals face. And that's exactly the issue we're talking about today. Why we have these non compliance chunks taken out of the frames. So with us, um, obviously a couple of other points there as well, which I didn't mention, we're not dwelling on it, it's aesthetic, so it looks terrible. It doesn't comply with infection control. I know that's not the forum today, but obviously primarily with the fire, that's what we're talking about, those doors and non-fire compliance. So here's a picture of one of our door sets being tested at Warrington Fire down in um, at Wickham, as my earlier colleagues were showing as well. So we have the absolute assuredness, and this is one of the big, big things we're discussing at the moment with all of our clients, you know, is this whole matter of certification. Now, as of this year, and I haven't got it up in print, but we have, a, as a company, have made a commitment that all of our tests will be tested to European standards. Now, European standards, as you will, as you will all know, are much more rigorous than what we're currently testing to, um, what we currently need to test to. As a company, we've decided the investment is worth it. It's much more onerous. It costs a lot more money. It takes a lot more time, but that is where we're going with our testing this year. We've touched briefly on global test evidence and primary test evidence. Like I say, I'm sorry, we don't have the time for a massive discussion on that now, but I'd be delighted to pick that up with you. Please do stop and ask us for a chat. Uh, so our solution, as you can see here, our door sits here. This is the John Radcliffe Intensive Care Unit, which was done last year. Um, you can see the door frame, the door leaf, absolutely encapsulated in, in an in a, a infection, in a um, antimicrobial PVC. At uh, two mil thick, and I believe we have an image. Sorry, my. Ah, oh, yeah, here we are. So I can now explain what I mean. We have a timber core product encapsulated with PVC. Now, 
the million dollar question, you can see the frame there is wrapped as well. The million dollar question we have um, often, uh, you, you'll, you'll carry on with an hour long CBD and you'll get to the end and you'll be in front of very learned persons who are at the top of their, their trade and they have excellent knowledge. And then they'll ask you the question at the end about the sustainability piece, which again, I'm not covering today, but really happy to do that because we can cover that very well. And my answer is the problem is the sheer, when we go for standard door sets, so a timber veneer door set, as we've got there, or a laminate door set, the damage or the, the, uh, the level of use in a hospital and the damage that that thereby creates will involve that door being replaced. Uh, probably if we took a 10 year period, or possibly two, three times, it will certainly involve levels of persons going back in and repairing. And what that equates to more importantly in terms of life and death is that that door, by the time it's repaired or replaced, will have spent a period of its life as a non-compliant door set. It will have had the item, will have um, uh, breaks or gaps in the, in the timber lipping. Whereas with our solution here, we can prove hand on heart, time and again, I can take you to hospitals where I can get persons, end users to talk to you about it. We will have prevented that damage up front. I was at Spire in Gatwick just recently, and a lovely, um, he's a lovely older man, we've dealt with him for several years. He bought theatre doors before I was even at the company, some 14 years ago, and he's got those same theatre doors in today. Now, if you were to take Alan's uh, little uh, measuring caliper, and go around that door, he still had his three mil gap, and the edges of those doors were entirely intact. So he had a very happy compliance officer. He's had doors which have kept his clients safe, or his patients safe, clients, patients, guess the same thing, I guess, in that situation. Um, kept them safe for the period of that 14, that 14 years. And what's more, do you know, have very, have very happy infection control nurses as well, because those doors could be washed and scrubbed, and the frames are still the same. And also, do you know what, how much money he'd saved on not painting those door frames over that period? how much money he saved on not going and repairing those doors. So it's not only had he get them compliant, he saved his money. So of course, in line with the green, the treasury green book and the life cycle requirement, requirements now, we can fit in that very, very well. So I've kind of talked about my compliance versus cost here. What we often look at, we break it down over a 10 year window and we say, okay, if you put in a cheaper door set of 500 pounds on day one over that 10 year period, I can guarantee you with the level of activities we've witnessed in the hospital, which has to happen, we will have, by the time we've got to the end of that period, we will, have, we will have maintained or even possibly replaced that door on two or three occasions over that period, by which time we start assigning costs to that, the costs far outweigh the benefits of the right product in the first place. There's a number of points that our colleagues from Calford Seed mentioned earlier, which really rang true in my mind about, about working with the designers at the beginning, and we do find that so much, that working with architects, and there's some in this room here who I recognize we've worked with and obviously really appreciate what you do. But to get that right in the first place, we're actually investigating now the potential of, of joint testing with um, the partition manufacturers so that we can then come to you. That was another thing that was mentioned earlier. So we can come to you with an absolute guarantee there as well. So not only the primary test evidence and the door set, we can take that as far as the partition as well, giving you what you need. Um, we've been doing a lot of these works with the new hospital program, which has been really exciting and is really exciting. And it does seem as though there's a real desire. Now I know there's a whole lot of political surrounding that and I'm not getting involved in that one. But it does seem as though there is a real desire to try and get this right. And I really trust and I hope so as a taxpayer that we do. So in summary, we're all about providing quality to prevent damage. So i.e. to help you achieve compliance from day one. We want you to be able to save money, to retain compliance, and to be able to have a black and white certificate that gives you the surety and the confidence to absolutely trust in that product and know that it will work for you beyond day one. So many decisions we find are based around, around those, uh, the, the cost discussions, which by, uh, by which time you know you think already we've, we've invested how much money in the design, we've got it right, and then we're at the end and we're sitting in that conversation, you have this terrible sense of deja vu, we're back at that point, we need to shave 50k off our 350k door package. And you think, why on earth, you know, what's going on here? But it happens time and time again. Uh, and I think that is really where we are working more and more closely with trusts, um, working with a trust at the moment that can remain nameless, it wouldn't be appropriate to name, but where they, the hospital is within five years of age and they have uh, exactly that issue. The doors that were fitted at great expense are failing on a, on a spectacular scale. Um, they were nearly all supplied cross corridors, that's the timber doors, timber frames with paint, would have, been, would have fitted the, the budgets wonderfully at that stage in life. Um, of course, three years later, we had serious problems. And one door there has been replaced three times in its five year period. So for it to get to the stage where it's as bad as that, it needs replacement, that door has been horrifically non-compliant. And we've had to go back into a very busy area and cause disruption replacement. We've had to spend on three occasions to do that replacement. It really is shocking what's happened. That's your and my taxpayers' money. And if we had patients or we ourselves would be in there, we would expect, of course, in line with the Building Safety Act to have that protection that we should be afforded and that the government says we should have. 
I think that brings me to the close. So I'm actually, I'm actually going to be a star here and go four minutes early. So I appreciate it's the afternoon, it's very warm. So thank you all so much for listening. Please do stop by and have a chat with us. And my cards are out, and my colleagues' cards are out, and we would love to speak to you and come and speak to you properly with our full CPD. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.